and I'm going to do a playthrough of Stormin's Lost Campaign, all of it, from the very beginning, including the 25 little extra here. And we're going to start out the sea station, as I showed a little bit of in my tutorial. Uh, and I'll start off by just welcoming you and thanking you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Please feel free to leave a comment or rate or even subscribe if you feel like it. Now, at the beginning of this game, you start off with no turrets, obviously, as you can see over on the left. But you have a certain amount of money that you can spend on buying turrets. Now, what I usually do is I start off with my dual machine gun as my primary weapon. And then I get a passive turret. Uh, called the decoy cannon, which doesn't do any damage to anything, but it'll basically be a tank and absorb all your damage for you. As it reads down here, the barrier decoy is nothing but it's piled up scrap metal. So, yeah, it's not going to do any damage. The machine gun is going to do all the damage. So, that'll be my primary, and this will be my decoy tank, basically. And then my next build will be to get a force field generator, which I'll show you over here real quick. And voila, shield gun, which will allow me to defend this from any kind of regular attack. But I don't have enough money to buy it because it costs 7,000. And you do get money for every kill you make in the game, so you want to try and kill everything you can. Um, the next thing that I usually go for is the mine tower, or sky mine field. It costs 10000 it's pretty expensive, but what you can do with that is you can flood the field with floating mines, basically, which will make it really easy to do damage to all of the large vehicles, as well as knock out all of the smaller ones that are stupid enough to fly into them. Now this game is also a game of strategy, simply in the part that you have to decide what see, what was that? You have to decide what to shoot at. Now obviously there's a few things in this game that makes it kind of choice worthy of what to shoot for. The little black guys that you see running around, he says they don't do any damage to you. They're just there as decoys basically. And they can take your killing blow away from you and they're really fast and annoying. These guys, obviously are bigger, so they can do more damage, but they don't attack you directly. The black ones don't do anything. These ones, if they get above you, they'll drop a bomb on you, and that'll do a pretty decent amount of damage, so you don't want that. Another thing about this game is learning how to lead your targets, even when they're not flying in any normal pathway. And then the wave will be finished, and you'll get experience each way which you can choose to spend. Now, for the dual machine gun turret, I always save up to get the uh, damage increase first. So that way you can do plenty of points. And then this one only has one upgrade, so I spend everything on this guy on getting more health, which can be effective later on. And I'll go on to the next wave. Feeling them faster than they can even get to me. Oop, that was close. They do have the possibility of missing. And these are the guys that I hate the most, because if you don't have a decoy or a force field generator, those guys will do annoying just little bits of damage that you can't block. So that's why you either want to have a force field to begin with or a barrier. And barriers are very cheap, because they are just scrap metal. So you don't have to worry about spending too much money on getting them. This little set here is a perfect combination, but there are better ones out there, and it's good to find one that suits you best. So, play around with other types. I played a little bit around with some of the, uh, like the sniper tower and the missile launchers, and they're pretty fun to do. Though I have to tell you that my favorite has to be the solar cannon, even though it is extremely expensive, it is, does BS damage. It'll basically insta-kill anything. That and the, uh, I don't know, the super gun. 
I don't remember what it's called at the moment. Still don't have enough money quite yet, so we just continue on until I have enough money. And there's ten waves in each of these uh, campaigns. And there's about, you know, six campaigns plus the 25, which has 25 rounds. So, just continue on with it. And the enemies do get progressively harder. They, the harder enemies start showing up a lot quicker. Ow, see that took a bit of my health there. You don't have to worry about taking damage though. And if you're taking too much damage, you want to be careful and you want to focus on getting rid of all the high damage dweller dealers. Because if they hit you, then that could be very painful. But yeah, the basic strategy here is always go for the largest vehicle, basically, first. Or if there's any anybody that's giving benefit to other vehicles, then you probably want to get rid of those too. Another secondary idea behind it is the, sec is the closest object to you, or the largest object to you, is the one you want to shoot. Because usually the larger they are, the harder they fall, but the more damage they can do and the more health they have. But once you get upgrades, eh, the enemies will start to just fly by and waves will go by like there's nothing there. But there's still a little bit of tension as it gets further along. If you just go back and play levels over again, it gives you a sense of accomplishment, but in order to feel pressured, you have to move forward to the next campaign in each one just a little bit away from that upgrade and now I can afford my force shield generator Oops. and here I just pull that over and select it on that uh. oh, 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 oh. these guys you want to aim for their parachutes that's what does the most damage and I hate them because they can take putt shot, puck shots really early on as soon as they show up on the screen and do a lot of damage to you. So you want to get rid of those guys as quickly as you can, even if there is a big bad guy somewhere nearby. Now eventually they become really easy to just blow out of the sky, but you still have to be careful about them. Oh gosh. That was lucky that he didn't take a puck shot, and there we go, taking a puck shot. And another one. <sighs> and I'm going to go for the no repair award. You can get achievements in this game. One of the achievements you can get is for not repairing anything throughout an entire campaign. And it does cost money, not the achievement, but actually repairing things over here, you see that would cost to repair it or it wouldn't give me that much money to sell it, which is kind of a bad thing, because once you have upgrades, it doesn't increase the value, I don't think, for any upgrades you put on it. So the return value is horrible. You don't get the same amount that you paid for it, so it's not worth it. One more wave. Oh, 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 oh. Goodness. And I've been doing this for a long time now, and they're still getting to me. I might have to put a few health upgrades on this one, once I have enough. And if you ever want to take a break from these games, you can. There's a pause button that you can either click or you can just hit the P button. And he got a lucky puck shot on my shield generator. Curse that and we're done. This is on computer. You can get this game for free. It doesn't cost anything to download. You just have fun with it. Do it as it is you want. Enjoy the game. I'm sure the creator of the game would love for you to tell him how, what you think of it. 
So if you feel obliged, you can. But usually you have to be a member of whatever the group is, or whatever place you're going to. I don't remember, I don't think I know what the uh, main site is that it came from. You see, now I don't even have to worry about these guys, they can't do any damage. It's only those guys that can actually do damage to me. The little machine guns, if you have a force field on you, the little machine gun bullets do nothing. But they can still attack your machine gun, and those blasts there can still do a mean amount of damage. Oh, he's gonna, yep, he hit me. Yeah, the next wave, I'm going to have the upper hand. And I might actually lose a few rounds, so don't worry if I do. I'll still continue on. I will not ever give up. Though I do have a time limit for my videos. But if y'all, if any of you watchers have any suggestions for how I can make my videos better, feel free to leave a comment or DM me or heck even actually make a response video, which I would congratulate you if you could do that, because I have no idea how to do that myself. And now I have my upgrade, so now I'm doing a total of two damage per hit. And starting my little mines, and this is where they send in the bad boys, the big ones. But these little mines here will be so handy once you have enough of them in the field. And trust me, this, uh, that one, even though it does just one damage increase, it basically doubles the amount of damage that you put out, so everything dies a lot faster. And yeah, uh, you can use hotkeys, which makes it easier, so you don't have to quickly pan over there, click on whatever turret it is you want to use, and then reset. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I have no idea what's going on. My camera is being a pain in the butt and saying that the battery died. So, I might be making shorter videos. But anyways, I hope you all enjoy this. Because... I know I might... Just happen to... Two more rounds after this. Die. Yeah, it's just two more bullets. But there's a weak spot actually on everything. Well, there's a few things that don't have a weak spot, but there's a weak spot on about everything in this game, like the balloons. If you aim for anything that kind of looks like a balloon, it'll do like nearly double or triple damage. There's also things that kind of look like reactors, and they'll do a lot of damage as well. Like, yeah, now the waves are going to be flying by once. Oh. Yeah, these guys too, they're like miniature versions of those big guys, and they can shoot a lot of heavy damage dealing firepower. But if you, but the nice thing about their bullets is you can shoot their bullets out of the sky. They're coming in organized groups now, which is annoying. Time limit's actually how long I have for the battery. Well, already back up there in the high amounts. More damage, decreased time reload. Okay, one more wave and then that's the end of this campaign. Bring it on. This game 
may now look pretty easy, but if you go and play any of the older versions, it's very hard. They don't have... a lot of the turrets don't actually have 360 rotation like this one, so if an enemy gets behind you, you can't shoot them, which gets really annoying, which is one of the few reasons why I like the turrets that I'm going to probably use throughout all my campaigns. They're the ones I think I'd recommend for the beginners. There's a few ones that I'd recommend that aren't very easy to use, but I'd recommend that the beginners use just to get used to the game and the style of the game. But this right here is my, for this level, my basically uh, invincibility setup. There's not much they could do to do more damage to me. He's at pretty low health, but yeah, I can take everything. The boss, oh yeah, and there's one thing there. The last level of everything basically has a boss. Now, it's not necessarily one enemy. It could actually be a whole bunch of little enemies, or a whole bunch of... I don't know, you name it, they might have it. So, now we're on to the boss level, and I'm still going for that no repairs, so my health for this thing is pretty low, but I've increased its reload. And yeah, the things that I would kind of recommend, this right here and this right here are the guns that are most well known for the game. Then the other ones, Every gun has its own special effect. The disc launcher is one you'll see me use a lot later on. The minigun, that's kind of fun to use, but it's very inaccurate for long distances. Sniper cannon, you have to be dead accurate to use it. Like, your clicker has to be right on what it is. Now, a few of these I've actually never used, because the guy that introduced me to it didn't use it, so I didn't either. But. I've used the lightning cannon ones, it's pretty interesting. Apocalypse cannon, it's expensive for a reason. It destroys basically everything on the screen and deals a ton of damage to everything else. Meteor, another one of those like in-game. Solar cannon, my favorite one, but the most expensive thing in the game basically. Solar stations, that's a power-up for it. You can overpower it so much if you want to just basically... You're, and I've tried one time playing the entire game through with just passive weapons. It didn't go so well until I got a ton of upgrades for everything. But once I got everything up upgraded to like level 10, then it was pretty sick. But I'd have to say, don't use just passive weapons. Even though they're cheap and affordable, they don't do a good job fighting their themselves. <laughs> okay. Here comes the big guy. And he has three little turret cannons on him, which I'll get rid of very quickly. Oh gosh. Okay, and then he breaks up into three little bots, which if you shoot them on their backside where the gears are, or their top side where the gears are, then it destroys them. And that's the end of that campaign. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please uh, feel free to rate, subscribe, and look forward to my next video. It'll be coming out soon. It will be the Eastern Forest, and this one is going to be a medium difficulty one. So it's going to be a little bit quicker paced. And this will be what it looks like. Thank you, and goodbye.